Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 47. In this session, we will learn the concepts related to enums. In part 45, we have seen why enums are required. And in part 46, we have seen an enum in an example. Now, if you haven't watched those videos already, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with this session. Now, from paths 45 and 46, it's very clear that if a program uses a set of related numbers, then it's better to replace them with the enums because enums make your program more readable and more maintainable. Let's quickly recap what we have seen in paths 45 and 46. In part 45, we have written a program, you know, we had a customer class, and in that customer class, the gender was, actu was actually an integer type. So what is the problem in doing so? So gender was actually one, I mean zero means unknown, one means male, and two means female. Now if you look at the program on the left hand side, this particular customer object where we are creating it, now if you look at the gender for Mark, is he male, female, or unknown? How do we know that? Unless and until you check the documentation what 0, 1, and 2 means in, in terms of gender, you will not be able to tell that. So this piece on the left hand side suffers readability. But if you look at you know the same program rewritten using genders on the right hand side, by looking at the you know the object you can clearly say, okay, Mark's gender is male, whereas Mary's gender is female. You don't have to refer back to the documentation because your gender enum here is giving that symbolic names like male, female, unknown, which makes your program now more readable and also at the same time more maintainable. No matter how complex your program grows, you know, it has better readability now and it will be better maintainable as well. And same is the case with the switch method that we have written. Okay, on the left hand side it uses the integer data type and case 0, case 1, case 2. So case 1, what is this processing for? Is it for gender male, female, or unknown? How will we know that? Unless and until you check the documentation, you will not come to know about it. But on the other hand, on the right side, the, the switch method is actually operating on the gender enum. And by looking at the labels here, okay, this return unknown is for an unknown gender. And this return male or whatever processing statements that you can have here are for, you know, gender male. So, obviously, from these two examples, it's very clear and evident that using enums, when there are a set of related integral numbers, makes your program more readable and more maintainable. In this session, what we'll actually look at is what are the various concepts that are related to enums. Okay, now we know that enums are nothing but enumerations, and enums are actually called as strongly typed constants. Okay, now that's the reason why an explicit is an explicit cast is needed whenever you want to convert from enum type to an integral type and vice versa let's see what we mean by that now we know that in part 45 and 46 we have created an enum gender enum so let's go ahead and create that public enum gender now let's say we have an unknown and male and then female. Now if you look at this, this is our enum. Now, if you don't specify anything, if you if you create an enum like this, then it's using the defaults. Meaning the underlying data type of this enum is actually integer. Okay? And uh, the values for these enum members actually start at zero. Okay, now let's say for example I want to get the values of this enum. How do I do that? Actually, within the .NET Framework base class, uh, base class library, we have a class called enum class. So if you look at this, this is actually a class. When I right click on that and say go to definition, I have two methods. One is get names and the other one is get values. Now for the get names method, if you pass an enum type, it will return you the names. Okay. Similarly, for get values, if you pass the enum type, it returns you the values that the enum contains. Now, an enum's default underlying data type is integer, and the value actually starts at zero. So unknown is zero, male is one, female is two. 
Okay, now let's say I want to retrieve those values and print them. And to do that, we can use the enum class. And on that enum class, we have a method called get values. Okay, if you look at this, we have a get values method. And if you look at what it is expecting, it's actually expecting a type to be passed in. Okay, now type can be your class, your enum, structure, anything. But here we want to get the values of our of our enum so we pass the gender type now gender is actually the name of your enum to get the type of this gender enum then what you have to do is you have to use the type of so type of and if you look at this type of method what it does is it actually returns the type of this gender which in our case is an enum gender enum Okay, and if you look at the return type of this get values method, it's an array. What array specifically? It's an integer array because why the default underlying type for this gender is an integer. So, integer, let's say values is equal to. And what you need to do is you need to convert this to integer as well, integer array as well. And all you can do at this point of time is loop through the values and print them so for each int value in values you can actually say console dot right line value so if i run this program now you should see the value starting at zero one two Okay. Similarly, if I want the symbolic names for those 0, 1, and 2, what I can basically do is instead of using get values, I can use get names function. So let's see that how to do it. So instead of get values, I will say get names, and you know that get names is actually returning a string array. So as it is returning, it's actually get names. So get names returns a string array. It's not an integer array, so we need to remove that. And here we will call it a string array, and we will give the name of the array as names. And what you basically can do here is loop through that string collection. So for each string name in names, we will print the names of each element of the enum. So now if we run this, it should print enum values and the enum names. Okay. Now, we know that the default underlying type for this enum is an integer. Now, is it possible to change that? Absolutely. You know, you can use any of the integral data types you have. For example, I want this to be short. Of course, you can do that. Now, the default underlying type of this enum is short. The moment we do that, and let's go ahead and run this. Look at this. Unable to cast the object of type gender to type system dot in thirty two because we know that here the underlying type of the enum is short, not int anymore. So what you will have to do here is type cast that to short. Otherwise, you will get you know a compiler uh, error. Similarly, this has to be a short array, and this is a short as well. And that's it. Now, if we run this program, you know, the output will be exactly the same, but we are using a smaller data type name now, short instead of an integer. Okay, because we know that genders will not have more than like four or five values unknown, male, female, or not specified, whatever the list you want. It, it won't exceed beyond 10. So it's better to have the smallest data type that's possible just to preserve some space in the memory when your program executes. So now what I want to tell here is that it's possible to actually change the underlying type of an enum. You just put a colon and then the underlying type to which you want to switch to instead of using the default integral data type.
And similarly, it's also possible to customize the value that an enum contains. For example, we know that the default value starts at zero, but can I change it to one? Of course. Now, the, the, the moment you put one there, what actually happens is you don't have to specify the values for the other types, I mean, for the other members. So what's going to happen now, the, the runtime will automatically provide two the, to this male and three to female. So let me run this. So one, two, three unknown one, male two, and female three. Similarly, if you want, you can actually say, okay, I don't want this to be two anymore. I want that to be five and this one to be 23. Is that possible? Absolutely. So one, five, 23. So it's possible that you can customize the underlying data type and the values that your enum members carry. They don't, they don't have to be in specific sequence. They can be any allowed value for that data type. Now, you may be wondering, OK, now can I go ahead and put a very big number like this? Now, this is not possible because the short data type has a maximum value that it can hold. Now, definitely, this number is much bigger than you know the short data type. So if I try to compile this, I will get a compiler error saying cannot implicitly convert type long to short. So this number is something much bigger than short. So it cannot be converted to be, uh, you know, to hold in this data time. So we get a compiler error. And if you are curious on how to know what is the maximum value that the short data type uh, can hold, just right click on that, go to definition, there will be a max value property, uh, I mean constant, if you look at that, the maximum value that it can hold is 32767. So obviously the maximum value that you can provide is 32767. Now if you want a much bigger value, change the underlying type to something else, maybe int, long, whatever, a much bigger data type. Okay, now if I run this, it should work without any issues because this is a maximum value. But on the other hand, if I make it 768, that's something beyond a short data type can hold. So if I compile that, I'll again get the same message. Cannot constant value 3 to 768 cannot be converted to short. Okay. So Another thing as far as enums are concerned to keep in mind is that um, we know that it's possible to customize the underlying data type and the values of these members. Now, and to get the names and values of enums, we use the get names and get values static methods that are present in enum class. Now, this enum is a class which has got the static methods. On the other hand, we have this enum keyword which we actually use to create enumeration. So understand the slight differentiation between enum with capital E, which is a class, and enum with small e, the keyword which we use to create enumerations. The class actually contains the static methods which can help us operate on the enumeration data type, you know, to retrieve the names and to retrieve their values. Okay, now enums are called a strongly typed constants and there are two reasons why they are called a strongly typed constants. One reason is, let's say for example, this is a gender enum. Now, can I do this? Can I create a gender? Let's say, let's comment out these lines because these are not required anymore. So let's say gender gender is equal to, can I do this, maybe 3? OK, let's put this back to, you know, a better sequence, 1, 2, and then 3. Now we know that enum gender has values of 1, 2, 3. And what is the data type? Short. But let's leave it to the default integer data type. OK, so. Now we know that gender is actually containing the underlying type of gender is an integer. And I'm trying to assign an integer value to gender. And look at this, there is a red squiggly. Cannot implicitly convert type int to gender. So the compiler is complaining this integer 3 cannot be converted to type gender. An explicit conversion exists. Are you missing a cast? So it's asking if there is an explicit cast, go ahead and do that because compiler cannot implicitly do this conversion for us. So that's why they are called, though the underlying type of the enum is an integer, you know, the underlying types and, and the enums are not implicitly interchangeable. 
okay you cannot assign directly the value of an integer to an enum uh, and the vice versa is also true you cannot assign an any an enum to a variable of type integer so in order to make this work what you actually need to do is perform the explicit cast so now if you compile this it will compile so on the status bar build succeeded now the vice versa is also true for example let's say int um, number is equal to i cannot say gender dot maybe unknown is this possible again now we get a compiler error saying that cannot convert type gender to int implicitly an explicit conversion is required so probably you have to use you know something like convert dot to int 32 or an int type cast operator and it should work now okay so that's one of the reasons why um, a an enum is called as a strongly typed constant though the underlying types is an integer you know the underlying type and enums are not implicitly interchangeable an explicit cast is needed to convert from enum type to an integral type and vice versa and also along the same lines an enum of one type cannot be implicitly assigned to an enum of another type even though the underlying values of their members are the same so what do we mean by this now we know that we have let's comment this out for the time being now we have this gender enum similarly let me create another enum public enum and let's call this a season enum and we know that there are three different seasons let's say winter which is equal to one and maybe spring which is equal to two and summer which is equal to three now if you look at these enums for both of these the underlying type is integer and the members contain one two three one two three the same values now since these are the underlying types are the same can i do this can i say let's actually get rid of these okay can i do this gender gender is equal to uh, season dot let's say winter can i do this you cannot do this you know we know that the underlying type of gender is an integer underlying type of year season is also integer but in spite of that can we do this no in order for that to be possible then what you have to do is you have to perform the explicit cast now this is possible okay so for these reasons enums are called as strongly typed constants okay so enums are strongly typed constants hence an explicit cast is needed to convert from enum type to an integral type and vice versa and along the same lines an enum of one type cannot be implicitly assigned to an enum of another type even though the underlying values of their members are the same and we have also seen that the default underlying type of an enum is integer the default value for the first element is zero and gets incremented by one automatically but if you want to change that you can change it is possible to customize the underlying type and values contained by the enum members and enums are value types they are not reference types we know that you know classes interfaces delegates these are reference types whereas structs enums and some of the built-in types are value types so whatever are the differences between value types and uh, reference types these are also applicable to the you know between enums and classes and the enum keyword all small letters is basically used to create enumerations whereas enum class contains the static get values and get names methods which can actually be used to list enum underlying type values and names we have seen an example of that and we have seen how enums make our programs more readable and maintainable and we have also seen you know the default underlying type for an enum is an integer and the value starts at zero but it's possible to customize that so if i want to change the underlying type to short all you do is put a colon and then specify your data type in this case it is short but you can have any of the other numerical data types and i'm also customizing the values to start from one now they don't have to be in specific sequential order as long as the values are the valid values for the underlying data type it is possible 
but whereas this program will not compile the last piece will not compile because 32768 is much bigger than is bigger than what a short data type can hold and for any data type for any numeric data type if you want to find out the minimum value and maximum value that that data type can hold you can use the max value and min value constants uh, that are available or defined on that data type on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.